Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the third grade concept of solving data problems. This is standard 3.8b in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 24 of the 2018 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we have a frequency table here, and it's showing the number of points scored by each player on a basketball team. So frequency table here uh, just gives us raw numbers. Now the way that they've got these raw numbers uh, are tally marks. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of extend it, and we're going to add to the frequency table. And all we want to do is we want to just put some digits there. We could just read off the tally marks, but let's go ahead and I'm just going to put a little number sign here. You might think of it as a hashtag. I just want to put the pure number right there. And then we need to have the combined number of points of Stephen, Alfred, Pete, and Wesley. So we are going to have to find those four and combine them so we have a little bit of some operations working on. And then look, we have no A, B, C, or D, which means this is a free, uh, free response. So I'm going to kind of draw my little area over here. And my free response, typically it's going to look like this. You've got like one column that really doesn't have anything in there. And that's where the decimal goes. And then you've got your ones and your tens and your hundreds. Might not be quite this long, but this is where we will put our answer. So first, let's turn this frequency table into just some raw numbers that make sense to us. Now, tally. Most of you have been working with tally marks since kindergarten, but the biggest thing to, to remember with the tally mark is going to be this right here, is when you've got one, two, three, four. The reason that we use that tally mark right there is that diagonal is to show groups of five. Because let's take a look at Stephen real quick. So Stephen has got five, ten, and then ten and four. So that's going to make fourteen. Visually, that is really easy to see because we're just counting by fives. Everyone likes counting by fives. Five, ten, and then one, two, three, four. Imagine if we didn't use tally marks. So let's see what 14 would look like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now, we could go back and count that, but that is kind of difficult uh, visually to see. So that's why tally marks are just so important because they put things in groups of five and visually you can just count them without uh, having to do one to one. So Alfred is not quite five, it's one less and we can, our brains can count that four pretty easily. Kenji, we've got two five, so I'm gonna just write over at five, 10, and then we've got two more, so that's gonna be 12. Pete has got five and three more, so that's gonna be eight. Let's see, Eric has got the same as Kenji. 5, 10, and then 2 more, that makes 12. Let's see, Wesley's got 5 and 1 more, that's 6. And Hayes has got 5 and 5, so that makes 10. So now we've got the numbers that we need. So now we can look at our actual problem. This was just to help us here. We need Stephen, Alfred, Pete, and Wesley, and we're just going to turn this into a long addition problem because we are combining them. And when we combine, we are using addition. So Stephen has got 14. Let's make sure we line them up correctly in case we have two digit, one digit. Alfred has got four, Pete, eight, and Wesley has got six. So we didn't need all of these numbers, but we needed four of them. And whenever I'm adding big chunks like this, I'm always trying to find tens. So I'm just going to count those two as ten. Six and four make ten, and then add another eight is eighteen, and then eighteen plus four is going to be twenty-two. So two, three. So it looks like my answer is going to be 32. But now we get to the second part of this problem. The second part of this problem is trying to figure out how to put this into our free response. There is no A, B, C, or D. So we have this free response right here, and this is what it's gonna look like. And then you have a whole bunch of circles in these first three columns. So we'll put those in there in just a minute. But we just need to know that this is your ones place, right next to the decimals, the ones place. And going to the left is the tens place and the hundreds place. So 32, that means three tens and two ones. So don't put anything in that hundred spot. If you put a zero, we'll mess it up. But you don't really need to. So then you'd find the three bubble, which is down here, bubble it in, the two bubble, and you're good.